Hello, so today we're going to be creating a value scale using watercolor uh, and then we'll be creating a monochromatic painting so that is containing or using only one color. So that's how our value scale is going to be as well. So what I suggest is with your palette, just choosing one color. Uh, I would stay away from yellow just because it is hard to get a very dark value with that. Um, so try to get something that's a little bit darker. So we're going to go ahead and try red. So I like to use the back of my palette as kind of a way to mix my colors. So I start by adding water to the lid or palette, whatever you have. Uh, and I'm just going to take a little bit of the pigment, which is the color, and I'm going to put it in here, mix it in. Okay, and I'm trying to get a very, very light color. So right now I like to have a test paper over here and I'm just going to check it out and see if that looks light enough. And I would say that looks pretty good for a light value. Maybe add a little bit more water because we really want it to go as light as we possibly can without it just being plain water. Okay, so in this first square here, I'm going to just fill it in. Okay, so that is my lightest value. So next, using the same uh, mixture here, I'm going to take a little bit more and add that. I might have just added too much, let's see. That's just why the test paper is good. Um, that's probably pretty good. One more scoop of water. Okay, and then in the second square, it should just be slightly darker. There we go. And again, just repeat the same process. More paint to the mixture. Looks good. I might add a little bit more to that one just so it's looking more different because right now they look kind of similar. All right, next one, same process. Last one. Okay, so right now it might look like these two are pretty similar. Um, so what I would normally do is come back, let this one dry just a little bit, um, and then add another layer. If you try to add another layer right now, too much paint, it's just going to ruin your paper. Um, so while we let that dry, let's just go over some brush techniques. So, let's see. Using this very wide brush, you could see I filled in those squares pretty easily, um, so you can get very broad strokes, you can get, if I hold it um, this way, depending how much pressure I apply, I can get medium strokes, I can get very thin strokes if I hold the brush perpendicular to the paper, and just go very gentle. Okay, so that's with the big brush. You can do even more with a little brush like this. So I'm going to get some paint. Same thing. If I hold the brush kind of flat like this and go sideways, you see more of the bristles are touching the paper. So you're going to get a wider stroke. If I hold it kind of at an angle, it'll be a little wider, kind of similar to the big brush. If I hold it perpendicular, I can get super, super tiny detailed lines. Okay? so. This is kind of a good thing to practice. Just practice your brush control. And, yeah. 
Okay. Oh, let's see. This is still a little damp, but it's pretty dry. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure my brush isn't too wet. Get a little more paint. You still want to make sure you're using water. You don't want it to end up too sticky. Then even when it dries, it'll never fully dry. It'll just stay super sticky. Okay, so that's probably about the darkest we can go with that one color. Okay, perfect. So we have light, light medium, medium, medium dark, and dark.